This is the life. <laughs> this is what it's all about. It is. The sun shining down. A gentle breeze. Nobody on the towpath, not a boat for miles. What more could you ask for? It's perfect. It's one of the reasons I signed up for this lifestyle in the first place. But on sunny days like this, we're also producing free electricity from the solar panels on Narrowboat Silver Fox. It's a no-brainer for us. You know how much I hate generators. The noise just grates in my head, it drives me crazy. And then there's where to store the petrol or diesel and the generator if you've got the engine on. You've got engine hours adding up and you're using diesel and it's just going to cost more in servicing as time goes on. So it really was a no-brainer to get solar panels when we had Narrowboat Silver Fox built. And when we were having it built, a lot of people asked us to do a vlog on the solar panel setup. But we wanted to give it a full year so that we can show you the results over all four seasons, how we've been getting on with them, because some people are a little bit unsure about flexible solar panels. So in this vlog, we're going to show you how we chose, installed, and how we've used the panels over the last year, what kind of power we've been generating from them over all four seasons, and what we think of them a year on. We've got five solar PV panels on Narrowboat Silver Fox. PV stands for photovoltaic. But what's the difference between the different types of solar panels? Well, there's solar thermal panels. They usually contain a liquid like water or oil. And as the sun hits the panel, it heats up the liquid. And that generates power to drive a turbine or an engine which creates electricity. PV panels, or photovoltaic, work in a different way. There's no liquid in these panels, just an electrical conductor. So as the sun's rays hit the panel, it creates an electrical current. That goes through to the controller, which is soaked up by the batteries, and it charges the batteries. It means we don't have to run the engine or use a generator, especially over the summer. We can go weeks without running the engine, just purely from solar. Each of our panels is 120 watts and they're only two and a half millimeters thick including the special adhesive that we use to secure them to the boat. It's special because the boat roof gets hot especially in summer and so the panels can expand and contract because of the heat from the roof. So the adhesive is flexible so it allows the panels to expand and contract when the roof's really hot or really cold so it doesn't damage the cells within the panel itself. At only two and a half millimeters thick or thin, you might think that the panels are really fragile, but each one has got this kind of gel coating. It's like a plastic gel coating on top and it is really durable. You can actually walk on the panels without it damaging them. We've had ours knocked when Sean drops the barge pole on it. The ropes are laid across them and rubbing across them all day. And a year later, there's absolutely not a mark on them. They still look brand new. Our five panels are laid on the roof in two pairs of two and the single one at the back near the stern deck and we wire them in parallel pairs. There's a couple of different ways you can wire your solar panels together. One of them is called in series, and the best way to describe that is to think of an old set of Christmas tree fairy lights. <laughs> you remember the ones where one bulb used to go and the whole set would stop working. Well, that would be the same if you wired your solar panels in series. If one of them was faulty or damaged or just stopped working, it would affect the rest in that series. So we don't want to wire them like that. So we've wired ours in parallel pairs. What that means is that the first two are connected together and then that goes down to the controller. 
the second pair are connected together and that runs down to the controller and then the single one on its own just runs to the controller on its own. They go through some weatherproof housing in the roof, go through the roof space and down to the controller which is near the inverter about a metre and a half away from the batteries. The two pairs of solar panels that are wired in parallel are connected to a Victron MPPT 15035 Smart Solar Charge Controller. Yeah, it is a mouthful. That single fifth panel is connected separately to a smaller MPPT 7510 panel. But why have we wired that single fifth panel to a separate controller? Well, the four panels in parallel produce about 68 to 69 volts and that's more efficient when you're wanting to charge the batteries. But when we add that single fifth panel to the same controller, it drops the overall voltage from 68 volts down to about 38 volts. And it also has a negative effect on the current coming in from those other four panels. So when we give the single fifth panel its own controller, it takes the overall voltage up to about 100 volts. And that higher voltage means that the batteries charge faster and stay full for longer. It's also got Bluetooth so we can see exactly how much is coming in or how much is coming over the past month or, or over the year by using the app on the phone. It's really addictive though, especially on sunny days like this because you're constantly looking thinking, is it going to be the best number we've ever had? So why did we choose a flexible solar panel rather than a rigid angled type? It's a good question and it's a debate we've been having with people, especially boaters, since we started building Silver Fox a couple of years ago. Some people think that the flexible panels are less reliable and produce less energy and don't last as long and that might be true for some of the earlier types, the ones that had silicon rather than the later ones with copper. And technology's moved on, there's things called bypass diodes, Whew, straight over my head <laughs> until a couple of years ago. People think that if part of the panel is shaded, it stops the whole panel from working. And the bypass diodes are these tiny little pieces of wire that you see running through the solar panels. There's thousands of them on each of our panel. And basically what that does is, if part of the panel is shaded by rope or leaves or a tree, anything, it only stops that particular part of the panel from working. The rest of it works, so we don't see really much loss in power. But the most important question is, how much energy do our panels actually generate? We have five panels. Each one is 120 watts, 37 volts, and just under five amps. That's a total of about 600 watts. But like any solar panel, flexible or rigid, you're not gonna get exactly that rated power. It could be a little bit either way, plus or minus. On an average April day, like it is today in the middle of April, we can expect to generate about 2.6 kilowatts of power. That's 2,600 watts of power. And that equates to about 216 amps. On a really good summer's day, we can expect about 3.6 kilowatts of power. That's 3,600 watts. And that equates to about 300 amps. That's probably about three times what we'd actually use in a day. In its first year, the solar setup has generated 318 kilowatts. That's 318,000 watts of power. That's enough to do 600 loads of washing every year, or even enough to light up Blackpool Tower for a couple of hours. Can you explain all that again, please, in a way I can understand? <sighs> when it's sunny, the boat gets electric for free. Yay! <laughs> Is that all right? <laughs> when we first started this project a couple of years ago, we had no idea between the difference between rigid angle panels and flexible panels. We were learning all the time, weren't we? Yeah. And we kind of put us trust in the manufacturers of ours when they said that they would get near enough as much as rigid panels would, even though we weren't angling them at the sun. And our experience is that they have done. Uh, we know a couple of people that have got rigid angled panels that they have to make sure are pointing at the sun of the same wattage as our flexible ones. And we actually got around about the same for the last yeah. year, didn't we? Yeah, we did. 
Now, that's not going to be the same for everybody. It's, there's too many variables, like where you're positioned and like they might have had less sun over the year than us or we just don't know it's just based on our experience and that's what this vlog has been all about and we hope you found it useful the other thing to consider is of course the seasons like it's the middle of april now and we've been really lucky we've had this for like a week <laughs> haven't we yeah so we've not had the engine on for a week but obviously it's different in uh in in, in winter and we noticed that the solar started going down probably september october yeah and then at its lowest, when the sun's at its lowest point in December, we would probably get in on a good day four, five 500 watts for the day. Whereas in the height of summer, that could be up to 3.5, 3.6 kilowatts. So there's a huge difference. And when you average it out over the year, we get that 318 kilowatts. So it's worked for us, but that's not to say it would work for you. We would say, do your own research. That's what we did. And we're happy with what we've got. We wouldn't change it at all. No. You could get uh, rigid panels that you angle up to the sun and get exactly the same. The reason we didn't, didn't, didn't want that is we didn't want to be kind of messing about angling them and taking them off for tunnels and things like that. That's why we chose the flexible ones. But do your own research. Hopefully this is coming useful. If you want advice on rigid panels, there's plenty of narrowboats out there that make videos on YouTube that have got rigid panels and yeah. they've done vlogs to explain how their system works. There is no right or wrong answer. Is there? It's what suits you. But all the information is out there. We hope you found this vlog useful though. If you have, it would be really great if you could give us a like, a thumbs up, click that like button. Even better, subscribe to the channel. Got loads of stuff like this every week. Uh, hopefully when the lockdown's over, we'll be doing a bit more cruising. <laughs> <laughs> but it's quite nice sat here as well. We're yeah. making the most of it. So subscribe to the channel and click the notifications bell if you want YouTube to let you know every time we release a new vlog. If you'd like to support the channel, you can do so by joining as a member. There's a link on the homepage or join us on Patreon. There's a link up in the corner. And any comments or questions, if you've got any questions about our setup, anything we haven't covered, uh, just drop us a question. We'll try as best to answer every single one or just any feedback, drop it down there. Whew. I'm getting warm now. Take I'm, me top off and have a glass of coke. I'm going to go see if the light switches work. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you later. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Ta-da.